Welcome to the Lightning Fast series with the Informatica Cloud. We're going to talk today about SQL Server integration. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you've probably been here with the Informatica Cloud and you can go right to the Edit Connection section where you have some basic information about how to connect to your SQL Server backend. Uh, now you'll notice there's a few different types. There's 2000 and 2005. Um, 2005 also applies to 2008 um, and supports the same data types. All right, now there's a few more boxes here that you want to set up. Uh, this is your username and password, um, so you should have that already. These are SQL Server authentication uh, username and passwords. We don't support the NT authentication um, because we're trying to be uh, Linux and Windows, and SQL Server authentication is the one that, that's across the board. Now this is your host name. Uh, so this is the server that that SQL Server is on. Now if you have 2005 or 2008, um, this will be the alias, and I'll show you that in just a minute. This is a SQL Server port number. 1433 is the default. Now, your administrator might have changed that, um, so you have to get that information from them. Also, if you use one of the newer SQL Servers and it has dynamic ports, uh, we need to make it static, and I'll show you that too. Now, the, the database name um, is ERP, and this really coincides completely with, right, database name, right? So this, this is my SQL Server configuration. Let me go ahead and connect real quick. Right, this is my server name, we just showed you that. It can also be my alias name. Uh, username and password, SQL Server Authentication. Um, and when we connect to that, we come down, this is my database name, so ERP, right? So let's go back. ERP, the schema name by default is DBO. This means database owner. Um, unless you're administrator or you changed it, it's gonna be DBO for SQL Server. Um, and then of course you can pick your code page um, and then, you know, default's fine, unless you happen to change it in SQL Server. This is the agent, so this is uh, when you first uh, log in to Informatica Cloud, you install the agent somewhere. Um, this is essentially the computer where the agent's running on. All right, and we can test our connection, and we're good to go. All right, now, so SQL Server is pretty simple, but let me show you, there's a couple gotchas here if you have the one of the more advanced, 2005, 2008. Um, a couple things is if you come over here to your protocols, um, you want to make sure that TCP IP is enabled. Um, the other one doesn't matter. I usually disable name pipes just in case because everything's based on TCP IP. Um, and if you click on that, you can see there's a few basic parameters, right? So um, enabled, keep live. And then this is a pretty important step right here. So if you take a look, I set my port to 1433. And you leave this empty, right? So blank if dynamic ports are not enabled. You want to leave that empty so that way SQL Server is always sitting there waiting in the same place for the Informatica Cloud to talk to it. So uh, by default, I think it's zero, which means it's always changing, so you never know what you're dealing with. It makes it really hard to get anything working. So make that blank, 1433. The other ones don't matter. This is the summation of what you're doing. All right, some more things to check here is under client protocols. Uh, TCP IP is enabled. Um, 1433 again um, and then of course you, know, you can make this one or two but uh, you know name pipes after um, if that's important but TCP IP is the important one and then the aliases are important as well and now one of the tricks here uh, really I think with SQL Server 2008 uh, is you can have different instances on your SQL Server right so you can have one database called uh, SQL Express one called SQL Express 2 one called production 2 but they're all on the same server on the same SQL Server they're just different instances right which is a little bit interesting right so the way that this works is you can define an alias um, and the alias name needs to match the host name right and you need to define the alias for which instance you want to connect to Right, and we love talking about Oracle. Oracle has a uh, instance that you can deal with, but here, SQL Server didn't until 2008. So uh, this is how you define the alias. Remember, the alias name is the same as the server name, and it's server name slash instance name. Um, and that should be it. So we come back over here to uh, our test connection. All right, this is the combination of both. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great day.